Welcome back, everyone, to another match. It's going to be Rar versus Gorda. This is more even. And it is going to be, I believe, on Ravaged, wasn't it? I didn't quite check when I switched in. No, Hide and Seek. Rar versus Gorda on Hide and Seek. So, starting out here, Gorda going for the Cloakabot Factory, and Rar very forward going for the Spiderbot Factory. They must be just having a spider kick today. I mean, I played against them, they weren't spiders, and now they're going against Gorda going for spiders. It's just... Sure, why not spiders? So a couple red backs coming in right off the bat. This is normal. Rar really likes to go for that riot unit right up front because they want to make sure that they have some kind of push force rather than a raider force. They often go, go for that. And oftentimes it's alongside their commander, but they've been a bit more conservative with how they've been upgrading their commander recently. They used to just upgrade their commander immediately, go in, maybe have a couple riot units to support against raiders that were trying to come in and deal with them. And then, at that point, just push to win. Or or lose. If their commander dies, they lose. Gorda, on the other hand, they started much more conservatively. I didn't, they started also at the strongest metal strategy. You notice here, these are all plus 1.3, and the one in the back, plus 2.4. Gorda started in the plus 2.4 mech extractor, whereas Rar started in the frontal plus 1.3, which means it's even harder for them to get back to expand. So Gorda has twice the metal income of Rar right now. While Rar does have the redbacks coming in, they're not going to have an easy time of it. They should be able to get in and get rid of the Lotus, but Gorda's commander, of course, is going to be there. And that commander, this point, upgrading. Not much so far, but it's probably going to end up having Beam Laser. That's what's going to have. So three Lotuses, effectively, in that one section. The Redbacks, wisely pulling back. But at the same time, Rar has basically no economy. Now they're finally building that up. But yeah, that for, that proxy Spiderbot factory, a little bit risky when you consider how much it weakens Rar's economy going forward. I mean, if we actually look at the, the numbers here... Rar at this point is way behind in terms of actual economy. Like, Golda has produced a thousand metal more. I mean, Rar's actually managed to use more thanks to some reclaim. Or no, wait, what? Those are some odd numbers. Okay, so apparently Rar has actually got quite a bit of a healthier economy than it looks. Strange. At any rate, though, Rar unable to get in with the redback, so Golda. Able to defend their main base reasonably well. Does lose a couple of metal extractors at the front, but at the very least, they are able to hold on. While Rar, on the other hand, now just getting their economy into a position where it's actually going to work. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. This is potentially people watching. It's one thing I'm not sure about doing it live. I kind of wish this way of doing an in-game delay, because I'd rather not have to restart the stream to turn on stream delay. I might need to do that, but... Nah. If in-game delay could happen, that'd be amazing. Although, imagine if in-game delay could happen, we could also have rollback netcode, which would also be amazing. Or actually, no, not necessarily, because that just means that it's storing the pack, as it doesn't mean it's doing any kind of simulate or re-simulation. That's what rollback netcode needs. Anyway, my musings aside, Rar having a bit of a hard time holding on. Go to getting in here and just wrecking everything. So, bit of a trick. I mean, go to their economy is stronger. Considerably. Like 14 to 7 just for static economy, let alone reclaim. Rar, however, now managed to get the backline static economy, but no weavers yet. Why are they not building weavers? That's the strangest thing. They have fleas around the map. They have redbacks set up to help defend, although this lotus being cleverly placed to make the redback go away. Which is not. Oh, it is going to work. That redback. He's just barely not managing to make it. Unfortunately, when it started moving, it stopped firing briefly, and that meant it did not manage to get the kill. Very close, but now Golda has that hill. And it's theirs. Or at least part of it is. Yeah, at this point, Rar is just struggling economically to the point that I'm not sure what chance they have. What are they have for priorities right now? Okay, the commander in high priority, the factory in normal, so at least the commander is building up the economy efficiently. It's just... Again. At this stage in the game, we're four minutes into the game, Golda has 20 metal per second, Rar has 10. The one thing going in Rar's favor is that Golda hasn't actually set up production yet, but they soon will. And they have been using that metal mostly to get more metal. Which, again, they can then push into production, which they should probably do fairly soon. This Conjurer, a little bit stuck because the wind generator is not able to get up there. But really, at this point, should probably just assist build. Like, Golda has enough money to make that work. Assist build, get another one of the workers to set up any energy that you need. Which, that's perfectly simple. I mean, there's there are four Conjurers in the field. One of them is in the back line. is not going to be doing much after this Lotus is built, so sending a bunch of solar collectors here, not a bad idea. And there's the Caretaker. Okay, so Golda is on it. That's going to be very tight timing, though. 
They want to avoid excessing. Rar, on the other hand, again, like, tight timing isn't really their concern right now, because they are several, several thousand metal behind. Like, 1,600 metal behind for metal used. Oh, right, produced versus used is based on storage. Goda has a bunch stored, Rar does not. Pretty simple. So that's the thing, Goda's going to be able to just supercharge the production once this caretaker is done, and there's another one. Okay, good. That conjurer is helping out the factory to build more conjurers. Get all the conjurers! To get that built up, then it's just a simple matter of getting everything else got Oh, wing. I don't... But yeah, this is... This is going to be an issue. That that early glaive did cause a lot of problems for RAR. And again, that early start for RAR, that very forward early start without going for weavers to try to take the back lines, like, I just don't get that. For a Spiderbot factory, I guess you want to get away from the speed issues, but I don't see the 10 seconds difference being a massive timing issue compared to the timing issue of not having that economy for the first two minutes of the game. Again, we look at the income, and RAR was stagnating at about 6 metal per second until they managed to finally get the back line, and that was about 3 minutes into the game. But at least RAR is managing to find some value in the back lines, having only to deal with the Lotus, this redback able to harass reasonably well, so at least Gota is having a harder time, especially for energy. At the same time, their wind generators have dropped down a little bit in terms of the actual output. So overall, RAR is managing to do a fair bit of work as far as harassing goes. And this is the thing RAR tends to do. They, they can be behind it at first, and then just by building up and harassing and putting pressure on their opponents, and then expanding behind that, then set up a position where they can actually get back in, especially once they start upgrading their commander, as they want to do. However, their commander is still level, level 2, 7 minutes into the game, and their economy is still having a bit of a hard time. And Gota could easily supercharge their economy once the if the wind generator comes back up and it is starting, the wind is starting to pick up. So as that picks up, the factory's gonna be able to build more and more and use more and more of this metal. And then from there, Gota's just gonna be able to have the raider army they need to finish this off. So Rar got kinda lucky, briefly, by Gota not being able to produce as much as they can. But that's no longer the case. And the wind generator is coming up just to be sure, in case the wind power drops again that Gota will not lose out production capacity. And of course, at the same time, Gota has taken over the entire south side of the map, while Rar not so much. So yeah, Rar is... They're having a hard time. Like, actually getting into the fight, though, that's the thing, is the Redback's getting... Or the Reckless is getting into the fight. The Redback here got killed. Didn't manage to do much, and the Reckless is not able to find much value either, thanks to that Stinger. Able to get a Metal Extractor, which is nice, but Gota right now, their problem isn't the lack of metal, it's the lack of build power in the factory. And they can resolve that fairly easily. I mean, right now it's only 15. They could get 20 with the Conjurer right here, which again, a bit distracted by the fact that wind generators cannot be built from its current position. But yeah, just build two or three more caretakers. And there! Okay, there I go! Two or three more caretakers! Already on the shift queue. So, with that, Gota should be able to, in the next couple minutes, build up the army they need to completely wipe the floor with Rar. And... By the way, people pointing out that Golda is the top player. Golda, Randy, and to, a, to some extent Drone have all been pretty high up. I'd say, I don't know right now who Golda's competition is, because Randy has been practicing a lot, so Randy's probably competition, or at least reasonably close. They were competition in the past. Drone came close as well, but Drone I haven't seen play in a long time. So I'm not sure if they're still really active or they're rusty. Mind you, Gota also hadn't played in a while, so Gota's also a touch rusty as well. They, they were playing other games for a little while, and they've just come back now, or fairly recently. So overall, yeah, Gota's really good. Like, really, really good. And Rar tends to approach things with the, the same strategy. They often go for that calm morph, like the calm morph push with a few raiders, sorry, a few riots, or maybe a few skirmishers to support it. That's their, that is their strategy. And they basically go all or nothing with it. That has been their strategy forever. They love the commander play. They love the fact that that gives them all that it gives them. They're not a huge fan of having to worry about all the different units or large armies or whatever else. They like to have that commander with a small army around it push forward. They're basically playing Dawn of War 2 inside of 0k. That's how they like to play. Or maybe Warcraft 3. Actually, I should probably say Warcraft 3 because I'm more familiar with that game. But yeah, that's what they're playing. It, it's in 0k... They're just not playing the same game. And Gota, however, playing the mass unit game, which is much more in 0k speed, 
And also, there's no riots right now. Like the, their red backs are not being constructed. Recklesses are, but glaives don't care. Oh, Sigaro, right, yeah, Sigaro's also really good. But again, yeah, teams players, so a little bit iffy if they're not used to 1v1 at that time, if they're a little rusty in 1v1. Like I said before, teams players have a tendency in 1v1 to focus on a small part of the map. They get a little bit tunnel vision, because in teams games, you're usually focusing on about half the map. You're helping out your teammate when you can, but you're largely responsible for your half or your lane of the map. And the rest of the team takes care of theirs, and you just simply provide help when you can. I imagine... If team play develops as the game, if the game gets reasonably big and people are playing team games a lot, and people are playing team games right now, that the team play will develop where people are trying to set the numbers of two teams, like two players versus one, and work with those numbers and make that win the games. So you probably won't see lane based play after a while, but right now that's the way it's played. Also, the way it's played is Glaive is rushing into Rara's base, finishing everything off. Not managing to get the factory thanks to the Lotus, but Rara at this point, they have a six fold economy deficit. And Golda just needs a few more caretakers, and the more factories as well. They are good. And they the, there's the caretakers. There they are. Just to clean it all up. So yeah, Golda right now, they've basically got this match in the bag. They have the Thunderbirds, should be able to disarm the last few remaining defenses, and then from there the Glaives can push in. I mean, there's the Thunderbird coming in, there's the Glaive coming in to deal with that. Getting rid of the Redback, because there's so many Glaives, they don't even care if a few of them die in the process. Because, hey, they can just build more. They're building, like, two glaives a second. Oh, no, okay, one glaive every four seconds. It's actually getting split up a bit. But still, that's a lot of glaives. Uh, like, this this army of glaives, this is, tw this is 30 glaives. That is a lot of glaives. Like, 30 of anything in this game is a fairly large army. So, that is should be game. And yeah, that is definitely game. Thunderbird coming in there, just cleaning up the last little bits. Rar's commander, at least they are, they have a disruptor bomb, they have the beam laser. The disruptor bomb can help against the glaives, but it won't help so much against the ravens, and that will be the death of the commander if the glaives aren't. And at this point, it seems like it's going to be a combination of both, as Rar's managed to disruptor bomb away those glaives, that's exactly what I was talking about. But again, it doesn't matter with the bombers coming in there. Rar realizing this, throws in the towel, and that is game. So, yeah, good job there. I mean, wow, Golda really took that economy advantage and ran with it. And yeah, I would like to see 2v2 meta develop beyond just lane-based play. Because the split play that you get in 2v2, that's, that's really basic. And there's a lot that can be done by having the teams coordinate strikes. Especially coordinating strikes across factory types. I can see that working really well. But anyway, that's not what was happening right now. What was happening right now was a 1v1 game where Golda managed to beat Rar. So next we're going to have whatever else comes next, because that's how it's working today. Stay tuned.